was the dream of having a bit of fun and maybe even finding a better life that convinced Anna to go to Ireland. But that dream proved short-lived and now she's once again back in Riga. Almost no one here knows that Anna was recruited as a mail-order bride for a Pakistani man. Anna's revealed the truth to her best friend, but she doesn't want to be recognized on television. She's too ashamed. Anna says she was naive and fell for an offer to fly to Ireland where she was promised money. A friend told me that she had friends in Ireland, that they were Pakistanis and would buy me fancy clothes. She said if I wanted to, I could fly home two weeks later. But the Pakistanis didn't let her go home. They said Anna must marry one of them or give them the money they'd paid for her. They bought Anna from the trafficking ring to which her friend belonged. Anna, who was just 18 at the time, was held captive. Eventually, she was able to contact the Irish police. But they can do little to help. Sham marriages are not illegal in Ireland, so those seeking EU citizenship marry on the Emerald Isle. The brides often come from Eastern Europe. It's a growing problem, and in recent years, uh, the problem has, has been found to have, have developed considerably. Uh, only a short number of years ago, uh, the number of applications for EU treaty rights would have been numbered in the 20s or 30s, whereas last year you were talking about maybe 1,200 or closer to 2,000. In Ireland, Latvian women usually marry Pakistanis, whereas Lithuanian women most often marry Nigerians. They wed on the Emerald Isle because registrars there don't verify whether the bride and groom really know each other or whether the marriage is fraudulent. Journalist Alexandra Yolkina has written extensively about sham marriages. Under an assumed name, she placed an ad for a job on the internet. Right away, she was offered a plane ticket to Dublin as part of a bogus marriage agreement. The journalist says women who accept such offers don't understand the risks. Usually women come from poor regions. They also come from Riga, I would say, but mostly. They live in very poor conditions and uh, they just are desperate to escape from here and they have no job and usually Pakistanis or Indians, they promise to find a job. At close to 20%, Latvia has the highest unemployment rate in the EU. Many young women, especially those who aren't well educated, see little future for themselves in the Baltic state. The Latvian government is financing a campaign to raise awareness about bogus brides. In such marriages, women are often raped and beaten. And before the wedding, they're emotionally abused. They have no control over their lives. They're completely dependent on those who've brought them there and manipulate them. But information campaigns alone won't solve the problem. In Latvia, sham marriages are deemed a form of human trafficking, while in Ireland, they're not. At the Latvian embassy in Dublin, they're aware of the problem. Our hands are tied, their hands are tied. The, uh, the Irish uh, um, police can only implement the laws that are in place. They can't uh, implement a law that should be in place. And that, that's where things get uh, very difficult. If this is allowed, it's going to continue to happen. For years, the Latvian government has been pressuring Ireland to criminalize sham marriages. Such a step would not only protect vulnerable young women, but also help control immigration into the EU.